Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Host. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 Madel, well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go ahead and get over to our YouTube channel because that's where you're going to see all our exclusive content. But the only way you're going to see that exclusive content is if you go ahead and sign up for our membership. How you do so is under each and every video, including this one, right? Right here in the description section, there is a link to say join our membership. Click that link, follow the instructions, and we thank you in advance because y'all see us on the streets and be like, how can we support y'all brand? Should we buy your merch? What should we do? Share your content? Do it all, but definitely buy our membership. Thank you in advance. Hey, man, listen, man. I got a guy here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction. This is his second time on Boss Talk 101. The first time we did it, we was in Los Angeles mm -hmm. off of uh, El Segundo, yep. I believe. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. and it was going down then, and it about to go <laughs> down now. Baby Young is in the building. What up, though? What up, what up, what up, everybody? What's up, Mr. Jamaica? What up, Big E? How everybody doing tonight, man? Man, we doing great, man. Everything going every way it's supposed to go, man. You know what I'm saying? Every which way but loose. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, man, hey, man, you know, I'm the type of guy, you know, I just, you know, I, I see the moves and everything. I see the work, everything. Uh, how have you been sustaining? Uh, uh, are you, are you, Good. What what's going on with your brand? Uh, I've been out the way, man. Everything been going good. Everything been great. You know, just trying to work on business plans. Just trying to get stuff going. What not entrepreneur a little bit. You feel me? I've been. I know I've been slacking a little bit on the music, but that's just because you feel me. I'm I'm a, come back harder like I never left for real because I ain't never gone nowhere. I just been working. So I just had a couple. You know, I got to get some clearances on this album, bro. But when this album drops, it's over with. It ain't no talking, ain't dispute nothing. Wow, nothing. I mean, you one of the guys that I, you know, seen come up, man. And uh, when you first came out, I believe it was was it Pooh Shiesty they tried to say that you sounded like, uh, like Rod Wade. Rod Wade, Rod Wade. Rod Wade. I know one of them. Uh, like like it was somebody. I was like, man, he they are they tried to. That was a comparison they was making early on when you first came out, man. Um, yeah. just uh. Let's let's go down through that for a minute. I want to talk about being signed to a label versus not being signed. I want to I want to talk about now that you're independent, right? Right, right. Yeah. So let's 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 get into it. What's what was the biggest thing when you were, you know, signed? <sighs> biggest thing, really. Biggest thing really wasn't. Um, Probably the biggest thing I really done was going to over our wave, but a label really don't define you. A label a label will only push you once you at that level, you feel me? Because if you sign to a label early, they really not going to prioritize you. They're not really going to care too much, you feel me? You're going to be blowing people up, trying to get a hold of people. Don't nobody answer the phone. So I feel like being independent, being your own boss, really the way to go, you feel me? If you can get your own money, if you can find ways to maneuver around the game, you could really have put this game on lock. You could be your own CEO instead of being signed he to a label. He said signing too early, but what is signing too early? How early is too early? You know when you're desperate, I feel like. You know, when you're desperate, you're trying to get out the hood, you're trying to do something, and somebody comes to you with these dreams, with these lies, like with everything that you you want, you feel me, with all these... It, being, a, being a kid growing up in the hood, you know, it, somebody come to you and tell you, man, I got this amount of money, put it on the table, but you're not reading no contract, you're not really... You don't know the game, you feel me? Mm -hmm. You got to know the game before you jump in the game, because if not, at the end of the day, you're going to be the loser. But sometimes the only way you can learn is by going through it. Yep. So, like for me, I say don't, you can sign the contract, but just don't sign it for too long. Or yeah, make correct. it something where you just, you know, you stuck. Correct. Yeah, like my first contract was for like two years. So, I'm def I've am i definitely gone through my Who were you signed to? Who you first? I was signed to an investment company that works under Universal Music Group called C'est La Vie. Uh, they have like 100k management under them so they deal with a lot of YNW Melly they dealt with King Von um, Raw Wave just everybody everybody you've seen the game low key go through them because I really met everybody through their hot boy like just everybody what made okay when you signed it what was what was the deciding factor for you and was this the this was time when you were linked some, somewhat with Say Cheese it was that that was at the yeah, very yeah, beginning yeah. right that's really what it was, man. Just 
you know, just listening to people and stuff. Cause I already had deals on the table before, before I even signed my first deal. I had a deal with Johnny Shipes up at Cinematic. I think it's Good Talk now is what they're called. They switched their name up in New York for a hundred thousand, and I went and signed for thirty thousand, bro, over a hundred grand just because. That's crazy. I went and believed people. You feel me? I believed people in my corner, feeling like. They was telling me it was more beneficial, sign for less money, do this and that. Like, at the end of the day, I signed for less money, and them fools cooked me because I got shelved. I ain't going to lie, I got shelved. And, and that happens, but let's just talk about it for a second. Like, when you think about, like, like okay, and like I said, and, and you know Sean be on here a lot. Sean Cotton is one of the guys that come through here, yeah, yeah. and he's real. Him, uh, one, of the, one of the, like, when I say – one of the leading factors, you know what I mean, when it come down to movement in Dallas, yeah, yeah. movement in the South. He one of the guys, late great, uh, uh, my my guy, uh, Big D called him a gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. Like, and that to come through Dallas, you know, you had to kind of work with him, you know, or it's a lot of people they put on the list. They put half paint on the list. They put rainwater on the list. But just starting out early like that in Dallas, what do you think? Uh, was it a plus to link with somebody in Dallas, or was it a? Do you think you should have done something outside of Dallas? And like I said, I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> I feel like I was, I was dealing with both, man. On the real, uh, me and Sean had our own own type of issues. And stuff. Y'all had a side side a side deal or something? Nah, nah. We just. Uh, he worked. He worked under the company. He basically works for the company that I was signed to. Okay, all right, I get it. So he he does blog and he does all the promotion for him and stuff. That's how a lot of artists get on say cheese and they get pushed more than certain other artists because they don't have to pay. But you was rolling that, and do you? That was a lot of stuff. You can credit a lot of your movement to being on that platform, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Is that I the first that. company that you signed with? Are you talking about that he works for? Yeah, say la okay. he, He's under say la He's mm-hmm. under UMG and stuff. Um, it did it, it. It it did help you. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, like throughout our differences, regardless, man. Say Cheese is definitely a good platform to blow up on. I feel like blogs are are definitely the way to go, especially if you're underground, if you're street, if you're trying to get out there. Like right then and there, blogs are the way to go. Cause I paid for my first Say Cheese post, and by the Lord's will, I I I got all this now. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. But what and, is it that they're supposed to look out for? Um, if because you looking back and you know what you had to go through, especially going through the blogs, getting signed, and all of that. Um, what it is that they should ask that you didn't ask? What is it that they should keep their eyes open for that you you were blinded by? Honestly. Just don't let nobody be in your ear because at the end of the day, you'll be a lot happier doing what you want to do even if it messes you up, you feel me? Because you you chose what you wanted to do. I felt like I was young. I got, mm, I'd say taken advantage of just because I believed everybody and I believed everything and I just walked down the road that everybody told me to walk down. So I just feel like at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. There's no there's no blueprint to this. It, it is, like you said, a, lot, a learning lesson. Mm-hmm. So just do what you want to do and... You feel me? Like, I'm, you'll be way happier that way, just doing what you want to do. Wow. What was what was uh, something that Rod Wave, you know, uh, said to you coming into the game and him being a big artist like he was or, or <laughs> something that he influenced you by when you started to do the tour with him? We didn't get to talk to Rod, bro. So, yeah, they, he didn't even let you talk no, to him? He, he never talk, even spoke he, to he you? He didn't talk to nobody on the tour. Did he see you? I know he saw us because we caught, like, a week and a half of dates and we were opening up in every city we went from georgia all the way up to baltimore so we were in maryland so i know he know we were there we were on the road with them every day but we didn't get to really speak to bro like he did he was so he was he, he, he was anti-social do you think he, so so when you look back at that and that opportunity through the label i guess it was all business I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they. Uh, I'm pretty sure they paid for me to get on there. They did some some type of move to get me on there because it it wasn't it wasn't as authentic as I wanted it to be. You feel me? Like I wanted to link up with artists and I really wanted to feel that tour life and really be like that. But even the people I was riding with, we weren't really chopping it up. So it was just all straight business. It was, straight business. It was like yeah, straight. So business. do you think it was a lack of having the right team around you? Definitely, bro. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. 
I think every tour is going to be different and every person that um, is headlining the tour is good. The personalities are different. Some people are antisocial until they get on the stage and around their fans right, because right. it's just a job to some of these people. Right, right. So um, you're going to have to learn how to do be, not to say change who you are, you're going to be who you are, but you have to go with the flow. Depends on who you're around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, like, like I said, my thing is, though, you know, the independent grind is different because you do build those relationships. You know yeah. what I mean? And you have to get out there and understand who definitely. you're going to be you know, linking with when you're making your moves. You know what I mean? I feel like I got to do a lot of moves when I went independent, bro. Like, I was actually able to work with artists that I wanted to work with because when I was under the label, I felt like it was harder to get in touch with people. I felt like everybody knew who I was under. Like, the label meetings that I would take, I'd go in there and say, I'm not signed to nobody. I'm independent. I want something. And I'm like, nah, you're signed to whoop de woo And I, that would blow my mind. I'm like, the music industry really that small? Like, everybody know each other for real. So... Honestly, yeah. I hear some people say they, they're signed, but they're still doing their independent thing. Like, they're not making being signed stopping them because they know that the label shelf them. So they're not going to sit down and just, you know, take that. They're going to still do their, you know, make their videos, do their songs, do whatever. Do everything that the label's supposed to be doing for them, but they're going to do it for themselves. At that point, they are independent because they don't. A label, a label, a label is gonna cook you. If you go against the label and you're signed to a label and you want to drop a video, they're taking it down. You want to drop an album, they're taking it down. So, if they're dropping stuff saying that they're signing somebody, it has to be a distribution deal. It has to be somewhere where they have creative control around it and they could put it out and not get any repercussions for it. Because mm -hmm. going against the label is like going against a shark in the water. You're not gonna win. Yeah. So when whenever things started to decline or you felt like things weren't going right. Did you reach out to Sean or did you try to work through, through the Say Cheese platform anymore? Not really, man. I feel like Sean didn't do me right, bro. Like, uh, Sean cool, cool, cool as a person. I know a lot of people like him. I know he got a lot of pull, but I just feel like it's like the same story. You feel me? I feel like Sean, Sean didn't really look out for me the way he was supposed to. My manager, my ex-manager third, didn't look out for me the way he was supposed to. You feel me? I felt like... Shit on the real, they left me out to dry. But but being an artist, you also have to do some research on your own so that people you know that now they yeah you no matter who it was whether it was Sean or your manager or whatever you was dealing with yeah, yeah. you know as a as a person as a artist as a individual businessman mm -hmm. you got to take care of your business no matter what with who you dealing with period right. yeah so it, and and then that's the that's the thing you got to realize like. Like going into these different relationships, that's a growing situation. You went through it for a reason, right? So that you could learn, so that now when you go to the next situation, it can be better. But you signed also another deal after that. No, no, I'm, I I do distribution with GT. Uh, okay, my okay, you Gold. did a distribution deal. Yeah, my boy Gold Toes, uh, he's Burner's manager. Um, he's a legend in the West Coast, a legend down here in Texas. He's worked with SPM. Um, he's just been in the game probably since the nineties, bro. So he's a, he's a real cool people, real good people. Uh, he's putting in plays for me right now to get songs in with Burner, MC Magic, uh, just legends in the game, man. That's wow. what I'm working with right now, my boy GT. Um, I had a question because I remember the last time we interviewed you, you had moved to LA and you said because you wanted to, you know, get more exposure there. It was just yeah. more movement and da, 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 all of that was going on there. How much? By you doing that move, did you accomplish what you wanted? Yes, I feel like I did. I got my L.A. ties out there now. I'm locked into the streets out there. All, all the artists, the streets, the gang bangers, the homies, everybody fuck with me out there now. You feel me? Like I feel like I took over Texas. Maybe not not as not as uh not as much as I wanted to take over Texas before I left because I feel like you feel me. I had I still had a lot. A lot to do down here before I left, but when I went to LA, I took over LA for sure. Like LA brands to the day still be hitting me up, sending me clothes. They, some people be thinking I'm from LA, but shit, I'm a Dallas kid. You feel me? Wow. I, I just like like okay, you get now you got a distribution deal that you're doing. Uh, I, I remember I interviewed Big X the Plug, and he explained to me, you know what I mean, that he had signed a distribution deal. But he was like, I'm not going, it's it going to take a lot for me to sign a, a deal. You know what I mean? Because, right. 
he say, because my family, I know already I can get the money that, you know what I mean? Like the money you just said, the twenty or 30000 do you think it's because, or, or the 100000 whoever talked you out of getting it or whatever, either way, 100000 20000 it's some money, but it's not going to take you the, the long haul when you're trying to, you know, uh, live life, you know right. what I mean? People make that all the time, you right. know what I mean? So... When you look at it from that standpoint, you got to find a way to elevate your brand once you do that. So going into the first deal, getting that kind of money, you had never had that kind of money before, had you? Nah, I really hadn't played with those. You see what I'm saying? So your mind wasn't conditioned to understand that level of income at that time. Mm -mm. Am I right? You're correct. So basically, as soon as you got it, you turn it up. Mm. Nah, I bought my I bought my house. Half of my money went to my house. Okay. I bought my mama her house. That's a good deal. So you did get a house out of it. I got a house out of it. So I'm, I definitely got out the hood. As soon as I got some money, I got out the hood. You feel me? I had too much shit going on over there. Had a lot of shit. How going much on. did you spend on the house? Shit, the house. I, my house is like a quarter mil house, but the the value went up now. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think for it sure. went up like a hundred bands, so it's like at three fifty. That's good. In, in Texas? Yeah, right here. See what I mean? That's uh, hard. Home, home, a, a Texas 350. <laughs> a Texas house? 350, hey. That, that's big in space. Texas, right? <laughs> it gets you some space. You, you, you be seeing them little, uh, little snippets come through on Instagram and, and, and Facebook or wherever or, or, or TikTok talking about the houses. Man, this house is in Texas and it'd be like a huge house for like 200 Yeah, two, I, like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> what were these houses when I was buying? <laughs> right. But no, let, 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 you know, your first big, big hit, what was the name of that song? Soldier, man. I and, and, soldier. And, and, and give me a, I mean, you know, I like to mess with you about the vocals. I'm more of a music head over here. Yeah, so yeah. give me a little bit of it. I know you can give me a little bit of the verse that how that thing go when it start out. I got you. I got you. It go, uh... I'm a soldier in disguise, bitch, you know that I'm with it. Love, forgive me for my lies, yeah, you know I've been sinning. All them nights that I cry, you can't live how we living. JD died in front of my eyes, now I'm running around with it. I know what pain, loss, and ache is, hate. Living like this, I want to make it. Feel man, me. hold up! I like that, man. Like, like, like that's the that's the game. Like when you first had pinned that, did you pin it or did you did you uh what what they call it, baby? You always say. Freestyle? No, not freestyle. Did you punch in? Punch in. in. No, nah, I wrote that joint down. So you wrote that joint down? I wrote that joint down. When you wrote it, what was that like? Like when you first uh, discovered that, like, man, I want to do this and this is a song. You, did you know that was going to be a big song? I didn't know it was going to be a big song. I remember I was just writing the cars with my homies. I'd write in the cars and I'd, uh, I'd always just... Like freestyle form, or just give them like a cappella versions, and we'd be on YouTube finding beats. But the day that I wrote that song, it was like 9 p.m. We were sitting in my in my driveway in my Cadillac. While I was kicking it with my homie Sosa, and I wrote that joint down, and I rapped it out loud on the beat. And he's like, "Bro, that shit's hard." He's like, "We gotta go get you to record that." We went to go record it. Uh, I didn't do a snippet in the studio. I remember I did a snippet in front of my aunt's crib over there in Austin. And that's when we paid for the Say Cheese Post because it was between four of us. So we put in like 150 each. Like How much was the Say you know, Cheese Post? Like 650, 700. 650. So How long was it before he put it out? Uh, When we paid it, I think it took like a week for him to put it out. But whenever it got put out, it did like, it did like 200, 300K on Say Cheese, bro. It just went crazy. Okay, I'm glad you went back to that. Now, when when it did that, is that when Sean reached out to you? Mm. Or his, how did- his, his childhood friend, who was who's my ex-manager now, third did. He, that's when, that's who really like linked me up and stuff, and that's why we swayed towards Say La Vie because they grew up together, and they just told me, you know, they told me a bunch of things that when we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We got the platform. We're going to look out, all this and that. And that's really why I signed for less money because- the say cheese, you feel me? Like the exposure, everything, the promo. It was supposed to be free promo, but even at that, I was paying for it. So wow. it was just, I don't know, man. I think but it's just it's, like it's I said, learning being, lessons. It's learning being, lessons. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Being young, I think uh, business, man. You learn in the business, bro. And and that's the whole game. Like I like I said, I always have Sean on here, as you already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, he's a business dude. So when you deal with him, you got to be on top of your business. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I think that goes for not just showing everybody you deal with from here on out. Yeah, you know, definitely. and I would say that's that to I've anybody that's sitting in front of us. You know, yeah, um, yeah. let me ask you this: like, 
once that song got big like that, when's the first time you heard it on the radio? When I there, I met Perion and P Skill. Shout out to Perion P Skill, man. Y'all don't call me no more. What happened? <laughs> Y'all been hey, on the man, show. Y'all know Boss Talk go in. You gotta call Big E. I man. think he did call me one day, and I was just busy. But shout out to those boys. But how was it when you first heard that song that on the radio? That shit blew my mind, bro. When I was on ninety seven point nine. I, I got to find the videos. It's on my old phone, but I remember recording it. I was sitting at my homie's crib. It was like four of us. It, it was honestly unreal. Like, all of it happened really fast. Like, I don't feel like I got to really feel it too much. You feel me? Like, I feel like I felt all that shit, and I'm proud of myself after the fact. Like, sitting here today, like, that, that shit blows my mind that I went on tour, that I met all these artists, that I was on the radio, that, you feel me? Like, it was just a whole lot of shit. Like, I didn't really embrace that shit when I was little, you feel me? Like... You you got to understand, you, you're you different from a lot of the guys that you are around, even the Hispanic guys in Texas that do what you do, the music. Uh, Is Brown was just on here the other day, and he got a song now with uh, with D-Baby mm -hmm. and Mexican, Mexican OT. OT. They're all Hispanic. I know, bro. You, you, That's my boy. Uh, Brown. Money Mind, right? Money yeah, Mind. Money, money Mind, mind yeah. DNT. And, um, you know, uh, the thing is, man, and then I, I interviewed Lefty Gunplay, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, it, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, I just yeah, I gotta left one with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Lefty went crazy on the show as well, and I, I just you know he asked me that day, and it's my fault. He's like, who who all the his the essay that you done interviewed, or mm -hmm. uh, who you be rocking with? And I said in Brown in Dallas. I didn't think of you could mean you did ours in L.A. Right. So yeah. my mind didn't go right, but I'm I got you on here as soon as it, it started. I, he made me think about that. He, he made me think about all the Hispanics that I, I interview. And and believe me, if they hustling and working, even Ralph Barbo, Barboza, mm -hmm. I've been reading the comedian. He's yeah, he's, he's out here. Yeah, he follow Boss Talk. Dope dude. I've been trying to get him on the show. He said he coming. So we still waiting on you, Ralph. But I deal, and, and shout out to George Lopez uh, over at T-Town, but also the com comedian George Lopez who shares Boss Talk as well. So a lot of people share the boss talk, you know, platform. Right, right. And I, I think it's because we try to, you know, be genuine and talk. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. real conversations. Like real convos. Yeah, like that's what we just have in here now. So, okay, once you get the distribution deal, you know that the, they've shelved you. What do, what is you what is going through your head? What do, what goes through a person's head when they get shelved, man? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I've been depressed. I was depressed for the, like the last two years because I've been. That's like whenever that shit happened, bro. It happened like a year into the into the uh, into the contract, and I only had a two year contract. Wow. So that's when you realized that you got yeah, because I was just reaching out like a like I was a crazy ex girlfriend or something, just blowing up the label. Don't nobody answer. Don't nobody pick up the phone. Don't nobody text you back. And boy, there's no I, I, ain't no telling what you said to your manager. Ain't no telling what you said to Sean. All those people when you was going through that. But why did you get shelf? Did you do something? No. I didn't do nothing. It was just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I really don't know what it was. Like, I could sit here and try to think about it, but it just happened from one day to the next with uh, Jay and Stan. I don't know. I, I was the only Mexican rapper on the label, too, so I don't, I don't Did know. Did you stop working? Did you That's stop what I was writing? Thinking. Nah, I was in Atlanta. I was in a. I was traveling, bro. Those, Are you those posting? Years I was traveling. That was those 2020, 2021, I was going crazy. I, I had features with Peso. I, I was with Draco the Ruler. I was hanging out with everybody, you, bro. Oh, yeah? You were with Draco? You feel me? So, How yeah, was yeah. the relationship with Draco? Uh, R.I.P. to Draco, I right? Stink Team Heavy, bro. Me and Draco kicked it that cool cool that night with uh, my homie Drophy invited us over. I think what it was, bro, now that I think about it, is, I'll be real, bro. Let's be real. Feel, we like Boss it, Talk 101. I feel like it was it was because I got in a relationship, gang. You got into a relationship with yeah, a girl? Yeah, with my And you girl, started slacking. Uh, I moved to L.A. They probably didn't like that too much, you feel me? But that's really when it all so started So you put happening. that part on you that you did that? Yeah, and I moved to L.A. and stuff. I don't I don't know, but you feel me? It's a lot of it's a lot of things that they didn't communicate with me, bro. Did you have to get approval from them or, you know, actually let them know that you were moving before you moved? Nah, whenever I moved over there, they were still, like, at, when I first moved there, they, they were reaching out. They were like, uh, work with Peso, work with Money Sign Suede, work with uh, Draco. Like, they were telling me to work with everybody. Shit, I think we were talking about doing something with Tiger when I first moved out there, but I don't know, man. And that was your label telling you that? Yeah. And then after they telling you all these people to work with while you were out there, then, because you already moved there with her, so, 
Um, when did it stop? When did it slow down? What happened? I don't know, bro. I feel like that shit lame. Like, really, really, it's just an image thing. Like, people don't like to see rappers with with a girlfriend or some shit. Like, really? they, they want to see rappers with hoes with all these type type of. Yeah, oh, so you was shit. in love? Like, been, you was caking at the time. Hell yeah, you got the caking. I don't. I don't been through too much to not sit down and cake and enjoy my life for a little bit. You feel me? I don't been. Too much. So, so I, I feel you like could have had all of, all of that, but just they probably said just don't put it out there on social media. Ain't nobody gonna have to know. Nah, I mean, I don't know what it was. It had to be that because I didn't stop working. I'm been going to the studio out of pocket all the time. They weren't even reimbursing me no more. I was two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars sessions daily. I didn't even ask them for no bread. I ain't asking for nothing. I just don't know what happened, really. They started wow. pushing me. Wow. They started charging me for posts. They started doing like... Let me let me just say this, bro. One of my biggest mistakes, and I can promise you this, and I don't care if it's with contracts involved or not, I think the most important thing that you got to remember, people are only in your life for just a period of a time. Yeah, yeah. They're bro. only in for they're gonna be there and then they're gonna move out. That's if saw. you really can get that in your heart and in your mind, you'll be better off when it comes down to dealing with business transactions, relationships, all type of stuff. Take it from an older cat. I'm listening. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. There has been time and time again I've seen phases in life where people came in and left. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the part where people leave out. They're so busy holding on because of their emotions. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm, but that's, business that's, is not like that. That's what Relationships a lot of time is not like that. And we, we are going against everything that defies relationships in life. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now nah, you, you, you're you <laughs> right, bro. Cause shit, honestly, yeah, you're right. Bro. Cause if you schedule, like I got two years with these people, whatever, I'm going to do a year and I'm going to focus on my, my getting out of this and doing something else. If you'd have been that focused, you'd have already been scheduling yourself to leave. Yeah. But I yeah, would think. Yeah, that's what, that's what I think it was. It's like I, I became too dependent. On you became that. too dependent. But you were a kid. You were a kid who got a, a what break. What do you mean a kid? He 18, well, 19. Kid, that's a still a kid who got a break, who um, a lot of times when people first get signed, oh, I made it. Yeah, bro, that's how I, I made it. <laughs> and that's what they think. I thought, they do. I thought it was over with, bro. I thought I was, I thought I was gone. <laughs> I was over the stars. Say, I want to ask you about the feeling you, man. Like, you just come out with that song. Um, what? How long has it been since you made a song? Mm, I ain't gonna lie. I've been in the studio probably like a month. It's, it's been a minute since I've been in the studio, but I need to go this week. I've just been shooting a lot of videos, bro. And I, like I said, I've been on the entrepreneurship. Like, we've been growing, we're growing our weed up there in San Francisco. We got uh, a new strain on Where's the way. Let me say a strain. Granted, I let cut that out. It fell out, my bad. My that's bad. all right. Let's that's all right. Get that, get that straight. You're looking good, too. You look like you've been, you been working out? Nah, it's the clothes. Nah, hey. I don't want to clothes. You feel me? <laughs> so this is, that, that's yeah, it. Me. It's called, and that's baby bag. It's it, a really? Baby bag. How did you end up uh, starting that stream? Uh, my boy Surf Sub on High Class reached out to me. They wanted to do a collab. They already have, like, motion up there in the Bay and stuff. They got, like, some of the best weed in the world, I'm telling you. I know everybody says that, but... I've thrown some to be real. I've thrown some to every rapper, Skiller Baby, like everybody. Everybody that smoked it, vouch for it. You feel me? I just need to put it out there for real. I need to get big bulks, which is limited right now, which is the reason that the world ain't got to taste it. But. Bro, let me just be honest with you. I just left L.A., right? Right. The weirdest thing for me was they was giving away marijuana. Man, I got I so had much never heard that. that. Like, like, we were walking, and somebody just walk up to you and just give it to you, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's how I, it is. Out that's there. different, bro. I ain't never seen it like that in my life. You think they're it's, trying to kill you? It's different for us, but it's like different everywhere. Like when I brought Shotty over here, she's from California. She it was tripped her out. Cowboys got guns on holsters, <laughs> walking around. And folks got thirty sticks poking out their pants, walking around with ARs in their pants. She's like, bro, what the fuck is this? Like, we in the war zone or something? <laughs> and nah, I, that LA LA's weed is just. It's like second nature. That's like smoking a cigarette out there. I was in front of uh, Roscoe smoking, uh, literally right by the door. The security, all he said was like, can y'all step like six feet down because the smoke is going in the building. I ain't mm -hmm. care about you smoking that's weed it. in public, nothing. What, let's talk about Draco the Ruler again, like like losing him and uh, everything. Like 
you you know how was it when you heard that he had passed after you had met him and you know just link with him like that it made me really sad because he he passed about a month after uh we met up for real because i feel like we didn't really get to link up the way we were supposed to link up because that night that we linked linked up it was already way late it was like four in the morning uh, but we had already been with him all day, bro. Bro used to pull up presidential for real. Three Escalades, bro. I, you feel me? On some Drake shit. I never seen no shit like that. Besides when I was in, with Baby in Atlanta. But bro pulled up three Escalades in the hood. We rode off to the video shoot. We was in downtown LA. We went to the studio. Uh, we didn't get to record nothing in the studio because he shot a video probably to like 2, 3 in the morning. And when he shot that video, after the video, he started getting a haircut and whatnot. And he just got to like 4 or 5 in the morning. You feel me? And, he called it a night. Uh, but the day uh, that you had heard that he had gotten, you know, killed, or uh, he got stabbed first, and then yeah, I heard yeah. then he got, then then he died. Yeah, it made me feel sad, man, because I feel like it was a lot of potential there. You feel me? He's like one of the goats for real. Like when it comes to the West Coast, when it comes to hip hop, I feel like he influenced a lot of people. I feel like it just made me sad because I feel like there was a relationship to build there with bro. You feel me? He would hit me up. Whenever he'd see some good food on my story, like, where'd you get this? Stuff like that. And I'd be gatekeeping. I don't be telling nobody nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? But I put bro on him. Shit. He, fuck, he, fuck, yeah, he was fucking with me for sure before he passed, man. How? So I just felt like it was a relationship that got taken too soon. It was a relationship that got taken too soon. You wow. Man, I mean, you know, like I said, when I seen him, it was it was devastating. It, it, it was few people that was passing away, getting killed in L.A., it was like a trifecta. You Long live money, sign sway, man. See what I mean? That's another one of your friends out there that passed. Yeah, man, that's my boy right here. What happened to him? Uh, he also he got he got stabbed in prison, man. Uh, oh, he went to prison. You met him in L.A. Yeah, he he uh, passed around last April, I believe. Somebody so, shanked him in prison. Yeah, man, on some BS, hey, nice ass politics out there, bro. I can't stand the politics. So they was oh because he was in prison. He was in yeah. jail or county or prison. He was in prison. He they sent him up. He's from LA. They sent him up to to a North prison in Bay, in the Bay. So that's like they sending you which where your ops at. You feel me? How did you how meet him though? Did he, how much time did he get? He only had a year, bro. He was yeah. supposed to come out in about uh, two months from now. And, you know? and, 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 uh, how how did you meet him and grow that relationship, being that you were from here and you moved out there? When I when I first moved out there, literally the first day before I even knew I was gonna move out there, I think his video got posted on Say Cheese. We was chilling. I was chilling at Levels, bro, like in downtown LA, and I just put that joint on the on the TV. And I, I honestly became a fan. Like, I love his music to the day I'm a fan. Like, that's my boy for real. Uh, I reached out to him because um, these were these were the days when your boy had pool, you feel me? We still got a pool, you feel me? But I was, like, lit. And uh, bro hit me back up. He's like, bro, I've been watching you for years. I love, I love your music, bro. I can't believe you reached out to me. Like, stuff like that, you feel me? And I'm like, bro, we got to do something. We got to work. We got to work. We got to work. But... When I first talked to him, he was on his way to jail. He was going to go to county. He was going to go turn himself in. So he did like about a year, about a year in the county. And when he came out, we chopped it up again. We just kept talking, building that relationship. We kicked it in the studio. Never did no music? Y'all did some yeah, music together? Yeah, we got we got. What song y'all got? We got uh, two of them out right now, Live Fast and um, 100 Rounds. And then I got a song that I'm saving for my album that is like amazing. Like amazing, like one of my best songs that I've ever recorded, and bro did it justice too. Um, wow, we just built that relationship, and it was honestly like brotherly love. We made TikToks together. We talked on a daily. Whenever I would post dumb shit, he'd tell me to take it down. Whenever I'd feel down, he'd tell me like, "Wow, not to be down." It was just, he was my brother for real. Wow, I mean, for him to just pass away like that, what did you say the day when you found out? I cried, bro. Like what was it like? Like like I'm just like you you and him. Uh, I mean, you heard who told you? My boy MV called me before it, it even hit the news and shit. I guess the family had called bro and shit. He told me and that shit really broke me because I was like fourth homie in like the last three years. Wow, you feel me? So I just that shit broke me for real. Dog. That was my dog. And you, you basically, uh, did you know his? You knew his mother and everything. Yeah, I got to meet his what, mom. What did you say to her when you talked to her? I couldn't say much. I choked up for real. I told her that I was friends with his real name, my boy Hyman. Uh, told him I was a fan. He influenced me a lot. 
and really, shit, I want to keep it going for him. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah. it's important to keep the music going for him now, right? Yeah, yeah. My because boy believed me heavy. He told me never to give up and shit. Literally a month before he passed. So, so you know you can't you can't stop. Hell no. Nah. So it's on everything. That's my brother, man. Wow. Till the day I die. Wow, man. I'm sorry about your loss, man. How nah, you green, bro? But it's let nice. me let me ask you this, bro. Like like what are you what 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 are you gonna do on an independent level? Because you have to take the range. You don't have no label. You got distribution. Only one I've really seen that just really, like I say, I, t I brag on Kiki all the time. He just left and shout out to little Kiki. Like the way they, the, the Houston dudes figured it out, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the way they, 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 the way they delivered, like the projects, they give it out. Like they, they put it out like they got a label behind them when they doing it themselves because they've been through so much and they got yeah, such yeah. a foundation. So how are you going to, how are you going to figure it out? I want to build my own team, man. I need, Cameraman who with me, I need producers who want who willing to work with me. Uh, just everything, I need the resources. I I just want to build a team, man. Cause at the end of the day, once that team is set, shit, you that you team can, is you important. Can put on. Isn't it? You can put so on. if you had a good team at first, you you be you be good still I'd, to this I'd day. I'll be gone. I'd be lit right now. But you still got the talent. That's the cold part about it. That's they why I mess with they, you. Nobody can take the fact that you're, you're a talented brother. Mm -hmm. Nah. You see what nah, I'm saying? Nah. You hard. The, the only person day, that can do that is, is you. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, shit, I feel like I'm killing a lot of these fools with, with the talent. Talent-wise, I'm killing a lot of these fools. I could rap fast. I could sing. I could... Do whatever. Do you do you do you mentioned about Lil Baby? Like, how was it meeting Lil Baby? Bro, that shit was crazy. Whenever I'm when uh, did you meet Lil Baby? I met him in the club when we was at the strip club in Atlanta for it was lucky my birthday in Water by G. Cause it was Water by G is one of his homies too, his jeweler and stuff. That's my boy right there. We trying to make some business plays too. I'm gonna link up with him when Shout I, out when I go to Atlanta. Shout out Water by G. Water man. by G. Um yeah, man, they bought out the whole club. They had all the sections and whatnot. And bro ended up pulling up like at 3, 4 in the morning. We was all getting lit, getting turned. Um, he pulled up with Rollo, 42 Doug, everybody. Um, I remember they pulled up to the section. Excuse me. When they were at the section, they got surrounded, swarm. We were over there with J.O.P. Um, sorry. J.O.P. is like one of the biggest Mexican artists in the world right now. Okay. He's a, he sings Mexican regional music, so he, we was kicking it in Atlanta with JOP and Baby, but they ended up getting in their session to get in their uh, section together. We was in the section too, but they surrounded them like. And this was Lil Baby, right? Because yeah, it's so many Lil, Lil Baby. You got you got to clarify. This Lil Baby, not the Baby. There you go. <laughs> Lil PF, you feel me? We was kicking it, man. Uh, I ended up like when I saw them pull up, I'm like, let me through, let me through, everybody, let me through, and. They were like, nah, nah, baby, not gonna talk to nobody right now. He he, famous, man. He not he not trying to talk to nobody right now. Like, wow. everybody, everybody been calling him and all. He don't turn around for nobody. And I'm like, man, let me through, bro, because we had already had conversations about him signing me and whatnot. So I know he knows who I am. M music blaring four in the morning, bro. I just yell. I get like a couple people behind him because I can't get right to him because security and the posse wouldn't let nobody through. <laughs> uh, I'm like, baby. Baby, bro, turn around, look at me, big ass smile go on his face, bro. And uh, as soon as he smiled, he reached out, shook my, that me up. Everybody in the club started like I hit a game winner or something. Ah! <laughs> I was like, bro, I was like I told y'all we do this, and then yeah. uh, shit, he came up to me. We had a quick brief conversation. Uh, he said he was gonna pull up to L.A. later, later on that month, and shit. We just been chopping it up. You feel me? We wow, just, we got to get these plays. That's mostly. huge, man. That's really huge. To, so you still talk to him? Yeah, yeah. I be talking to Sad. I be talking to Baby. But I'm trying to solidify these damn. I don't know. But that's big to have those relationships. That's a real genuine relationship. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's the most important thing I found out being in this whole thing is relationships are the most important thing. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? So yeah, but what he's correct me if I'm wrong because. 
you can have those relationships, but sometimes you have to know how to close the deal. When I say close the deal, I mean like, what are you getting out of these relationships? I think just to be connected to those guys and to make sure that you you stand on that stage properly in that relationship, that they're going to they're gonna suggest you at the right time. They're yeah, gonna yeah. promote you, got, you at you the right do, time. You gotta do something. You, you, you got, gotta do something that benefits them because they're they're just so like on the level that they know that if they give it to anybody, they're gonna get they're gonna it. go. They're, they're gonna go. So it's just it's just been talks and stuff. I talked to them at the Grammys and whatnot. So uh, what Grammys? Just trying to solidify. The last, last, Grammy? last year, not this last year. year. <laughs> you didn't go this year. No, I didn't go this year. I went to last year's Grammys though. Wow, how was how is it like like being uh, known? What's the craziest thing happened when people like like see you? What's the, what, what's the crazy thing a fan then said or walked up to you and done? Honestly, it just blows my mind that a lot of people say they look up to me, bro. That a lot of people saying that they they look up to what I do and that shit. Some people have told me they grew up on my music. I still have kids ask me for what type of haircuts I get, like stuff <laughs> like that. Like just being wow. a, being an influence in people's life, that alone blows my mind, bro. Like me being a kid from Webb Chapel up Northwest Dallas, I never in my life graduated high school that I think I'd be, you know, like something that somebody looks up to. Wow. Like, that's what blows my mind, really. I ain't never had no crazy experience. Nobody tried. To, nobody ever tried me. Nobody. No, ever no, 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 nothing like that. Just basically a fan that comes up and, like you say, talk to you. You know, I'm not really looking for something yeah, crap. Yeah. I'm just looking mm -hmm. for the experience. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, that's, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's dope that that people because the people recognize you and they run up on you. It's up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. hey man, I want to see you, man. I want to. I, can you take a picture with me and stuff like that? You know, yeah, people love wild. you, bro. You know, and and that's the cold part about it. Like, what's the difference between uh, say uh, Dallas music scene versus say Houston when you look at it I, I always go to that cause we in Texas I feel like Houston be united bro like Dallas don't be united like people could say like, like it, it slowed down a bit like we not really beefing no more but Houston you see the artists with the other artists on a daily basis or every other day they go to events together they shoot videos together like out here, it's hard. It's hard as fuck to reach a motherfucker for real. Like, people don't really want to work with you unless, unless you're like on equal footing or something. You feel me? Like, people out here don't really look out for you, bro. I feel like Houston be looking out for each other. Would you? Do you, do you feel like um, at this moment now, compared to back in the day, but at this moment, to 2024? Do you feel like there have been a breakthrough for Hispanics in the rap game? Yes. I feel like definitely within the last year, it's just been going crazy with the Hispanic rappers. Like, there's rappers coming out that I don't even know came out. You feel me? Like, shit. There's been a lot of rappers, a lot of Hispanic rappers. D-Baby, O.T., Lefty Gunplay, mm -hmm. Rowdy, Rowdy Rags, uh... I'm seeing a lot popping up. Yeah, just a lot of people. I think that's where I, the movement going Shout out now. to Big Tony down there in Houston. The, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Big Tony. He, yeah. I, I, I'm about to have him on the yeah, show, too. Yeah, I really think that's where um, this is going. Because, you know, at first it was like the guys running the thing, black guys running the thing. Then you had the females, you know, popping now. And then I see that's where it's, it's going you think to. think so? I think so. Yeah. Would you also, well, oh, Baby Youngin. Mm -hmm. Not, he here. You know what I'm saying? And then who else? Who is Young Easy? But you got to take advantage of it now, since since yeah, it's yeah, opening yeah. up. That's the reason why I'm saying you have to, to be work. grinding more than you've ever grinded yeah, before. Yo, I'm about to keep doing my entrepreneurship, but I'm really about to hop back in my music bag because that's is you feel me? Like I feel like with all the personal stuff and all the business stuff I went to, I lost the love for it. But if you love something, you really never stop loving it. You know, like mm -hmm. I really love this shit, and I, I, I this is really what I want to do with my life, like. Motivating people. I've had people tell me that I've gotten them through their brother's death with yeah, my music and sure. stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. shit like that. Like I can't give up on stuff like that. Or it's probably the soulful. Yeah, the craziest thing probably is somebody got my album cover tatted on their neck. Bro. See, that's what that's I, I knew was up. You that's saw crazy. that. Tell me wow. how was it when you first seen that? That shit was crazy, man. I, I like that to have that type of influence on somebody, bro. That's amazing, man. That's that's love. That's not. Was that the love. person who said that they um it had them through somebody's death? Uh uh, it was. It okay. was I don't I don't think it was him, but uh, uh just like regardless, that was like out of amazing. all your songs that you've done so far, um, which one is still by far your your favorite? 
Um, Cause it meant the most to you. Honestly, probably like letter to my mother. Uh, a lot of my early songs meant a lot to me because uh, that was like stuff where I was like really in tune with what I was rapping about. Like I was going through a lot of things like, when I was younger, like when I was trying to blow up and go mm. through music and stuff. Like uh, so, a lot of a lot of my early music really means a lot to me. Like letter to my mother. Give me, give me a little long. bit of le letter to my mom. I want to hear a piece of that. Riding through the city while I'm looking at the lights Mommy, I'm sorry, I know I ain't living right Lodge, they, oh, Damn, I forgot my <laughs> words <laughs> But yeah, something like that Like That's I all right, yo, your that boy, Yeah, but, but, but he, you know, the thing I like about you is you keep working, man How did you do, uh, the who got it, what, what was that, how was that doing, you know, doing that song? It was fun, man It's like a little, like a little TikTok song Like I've been having fun with it I I ain't been sticking to my roots just because I want to experiment. I want to drop all types of music because there's all types of fan bases out there. You feel me? But the pain lane is really my lane, man. The pain lane, I shit. I can't nobody see me on that motherfucker. Who produced that? Platzes? Uh My boy Platzes over there in Austin. Uh, my boy Platt, man. Perry the Platypus, my boy. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. What up, Platzes? But my boy Exotic Scotty got me linked up out there with my boy Platzes, man. He's a big producer. He's got some would, plaques under his belt. Would you work, you know, Derez the show? Would you work with Derez? Man, I've been trying to reach out to Derez. That's man. my boy. Let, let's let's put it together, man. Even, okay, even I'm, I'm about to go see him. Even if you give me a price or something, I'm, I'll make it happen, man. Okay, that, that's my boy. I want to sum with Derez. I feel like uh, he's been on my page before. He's liked a couple of my posts and stuff, but whenever I reach out to him, he doesn't hit me back, man. I well, do I, I, I get with him. Yes. Um, uh, street love, man. Let, let, I mean, that's a banger. What, 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 what was the motivation behind that? And I know bangers. <laughs> <laughs> um, street love is an older song, but it's just. It's a banger, man. Like, uh, just loving the streets. You feel me? Like me loving the streets over, over everything, really, man. Over Gucci, Prada, Fendi. Like, loving the streets. I had to stop loving the streets, man. You feel me? The streets don't love you, man. Um, let me ask you this: Like, if you was doing a song with you, listen to D Baby. Mm -hmm. What type of song would you do with a D Baby? We kill some pain music. We <laughs> some kill, pain music. We kill some pain music. I don't even know. I feel like I'm waiting. I feel like people wait. They're not waiting because they don't know they waiting, but they waiting. When that happens, bro, they're not even gonna know who's who. Like that shit's gonna be hard. They gonna be, was D baby harder? Was Young and harder? It's gonna be like, nah, the song was hard, bro. What, but when you listen to that Mex Mexican OT, he be he be blah, 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 he, he we got we could do some shit too. You I see got, what I'm I saying? Got, got you got perfect. something we can go with that? Yeah, yeah, I got some shit perfect for him too. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would like to blink you and that's Brown. On the, that's on the way, man. Me Why you and Brown, Brown don't do him. nothing? Uh, we talking about it. We yeah, gonna I want to see y'all do something. I mean, uh, I think we talked like two weeks ago. That's a part of the unity, bro. Yeah, we gonna y'all gotta to create it. Yeah, yeah. So in Dallas, like the the thing is, and and, and I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Being that I'm I'm partners with Sean and I'm partners with you, I like to I like to get that to where we could you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't no it ain't no animosity or nothing. I like know that. it ain't, but it's still, just, it, just to have a good you know chemistry around the city so people can suggest people and that that yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. It's all right to go through something together and then get past it, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm being real. Like like money is something, but you can hold it to a point. I talked to a guy this morning who felt like he got screwed on a deal, a big deal, and it came back right there in front of him with the person. And the people are like, no, nah, we're going to do it this way. You see what I'm saying? And he didn't even know. But then that person seen him see that situation right there in his face. So what I'm saying is, same thing with him. You have to get to a point where, hey, man, I know the label going to do this and this and this. But let's get past our differences. And let's, 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 you know, we can always be positive on each other's. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, because we all hustlers, man. Yeah, Period. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, any top three uh, Hispanic uh, artists of all time? I ain't did that before, mm -hmm. right? Top three Hispanic artists of all time. You know, I know the guy. Uh, what's his name? This is about Arasa. You know the old school nigga. Know. Yeah, that's uh, Clint Payback saying, "Homie, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was uh, the first ruthless yeah. uh, uh, Hispanic artist too. He was first Hispanic. Mm. Wow. 
on Ruthless Record with mm-hmm, EZ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name. I, I love look it up. I love Santa Fe Clan. Okay. Um, my boy Nathanael Cano, and then rap wise, let me let me let me try to. Like a, it's it's my all boy, genres. My boy Money Sign Sway, man. I love Money Sign Sway. Where is he out of? He's LA. Uh my boy from LA, man. Um that, bro, that ain't that ain't hard, bro. Who's the guy that, that turned his life over to God? Daddy Yankee. Boom gang. No, Daddy, Daddy Yankee. Yankee. <laughs> that was him. No, uh Daddy, Daddy Yankee. Yeah, Daddy Yankee go hard. He changes he changed his life over. He, my he boy, said he a Christian. My boy he Peso. Is. Peso gonna be one of the goats when he done. I don't know if you've seen my boy Peso uh from out there in LA too. That boy's gonna be one of the goats. You think so? I know so. He, you know you know, so. He he one of them ones. Are you moving back to West Coast? Every time you always take <laughs> you look to the left, you look to the right, and then you be like you going back on us or you going to stay nah, in Texas? Nah, I'm going to stay in Texas. I got motion out here, man. People love me out here. Oh, feel for me? sure. People love me out here. You feel me? People love me way more than I thought they loved me out here. You feel me? When you came back, how big yeah, was it? like it was, it was lucky crazy, man. I didn't, everywhere I go, people recognize me. That shit blows my mind because I'm like, damn, I blew up like four or five years ago. You motherfuckers they love me. remember me. Like, <laughs> so what'd you do? I'm going to put together a show. You going to come and perform for me? Let's do it, bro. I'm going to put something Let's together. I think I'm gonna do that here pretty quick this year. 2024, we gotta do it. I'm That's gonna bring good. I'm gonna bring all the people that rock with Boss Talk together and put up the money and just do something to try to bring the city together. That'd be dope, man. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring my people through. So my people is a lot of times from all different places. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so yeah. man, um, uh, I'm I'm not gonna hold you up. What um, what uh, how can people get a hold of if they're trying to re- link up with you? Man, hit me up on Instagram, baby young and B A B Y Y U N G I N. Uh really just through there. You feel me? Give me one like, give me one more one one of them new songs before you get out of um, here. Yeah, it's something you, you, you can rock yeah. us out with. We all we love we love oh, your music. Like like rapping? Whatever you decide. Um, Rap, sing, whatever. <clears throat> this is some more release shit. I gotta drop this whole everybody been asking me for this joint. Uh Stayed up last night talking to the Lord. You love me then, you don't love me anymore. I was broke back then, but I ain't broke anymore. I was broke back then. Baby girl, I'm sorry, but I popped a seal. What you know about sleeping with no meal? They saying I fell off, made the wrong choice, but I need a meal. Made my own choice, give a fuck about how they feel. I tried with you, I tried, I tried. I'll fly with you outside, fly high. Man, yeah, yeah, man, like that. and, and that's you know your 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 songs be about feeling, man. Yeah, yeah. You all you 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 always ever since you started always it's feelings involved, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, man. Music means a lot to me, bro. Music saved my life, bro. I feel like music really saved my life, man. Like just rapping and just learning, how, listening to music because I didn't find out about hip hop till I was like sixteen, fifteen, bro. So music really changed my life, man. It changed. But it's, would you say you're an emotional person? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you getting ready to go down to Atlanta, you say? So what you got going down there? I'm going to go link up with Lil' Key, uh, Chris Brown Camp, uh, Young Jock, my boy T-Rail. Um, Shout out T-Rail. That's my guy. I talked to him the other night. He, he should be back on the show. I, I got to yeah, give him a call. Yeah. We about to be out there, man. We got a we got a banger ass song, bro. That you, you feel me? Let me just, see if I can give it a sneak peek real quick. Already. I know where it's at. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, my boy Skids, man. Shout out Skids, man. Look at this. Yeah. This shit gonna go on the radio. We off. Who this sound like? Chris. Chris, bro. That's real, yeah. Hold on, we got everybody. Do it. Y'all got everybody. Do it. That's you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Like you can't shirt too much. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Now we gotta go shoot that video. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go shoot that video. That's gonna be hard. Man. So what is that? You don't even know when that coming out. Oh, uh, I don't know when it's coming out, but I know we're gonna be out there in April. We already got a date on the video. 
uh, we booked out a whole club, whole venue type thing. So it's it's really about to go down over there in Atlanta, man. How was it wor working with T Rail? Uh, I haven't got to meet him personally. You ain't got to man. meet him. Y'all just sending verses yeah, around. My boy, my I can't boy. stand y'all. This new, I hate the new way they do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I be wanting to hear the stories, man. Yeah, bro. But I get it, though. You got to get up. that work. You got to get that work. So y'all about to link up, though. Yeah, yeah, we about to link that's up. That's going to be huge. You going to send me. I've been seeing him, man. He be on that freaky oh, that's shit, my, man. <laughs> <laughs> he be on that freaky shit, man. I, I want you, when you get with him, FaceTime me so we can all talk. We going to cut up. Let me know where y'all at. I might pull up, nigga. Pull up to Atlanta. I'm going to be there. I'm about to be there anyway, but I'm gonna be there before you. Yeah, yeah, Jock. Everybody gonna be there, bro. Shit, Jock is a legend to me. So oh, really? Shit, you you a big you a big Jock yeah, fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be watching on my love and hip hop too. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> wow. Well, got me on love and hip hop. Well, man, we love you, bro. We appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk One Hundred and One, man. Bro. You always welcome. I hope to see you again within the next quarter or so when that song come out, maybe in April. That's my dog, man. What you got? A, a, a bully? What you got? A, a, yeah, he a, a Frenchy? He, he a Frenchy. And a bully, oh, you the mixed wow. breed. My boy Mole, wow, yeah. you my boy, man. We I got, just wanted to shout him out. You gotta shout him out. <laughs> Check it, man. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah. Make sure you guys get in the comments, man. Make sure you look at these next clips coming up as well. And hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss is talk. And we out.